Hello, hello, and welcome back to War Thunder. Today, I want to talk a little bit about map rotation, some actual problems in RRB, but actually, I want to make a response video to a um, video from War Thunder itself or Gaijin, which they called Overcoming the Stock Grind. And overall, you have to give Gaijin just a thumbs up for at least giving there some official or having there some official videos on this because uh, the majority of players I guess is not looking for guides or videos how to get better at the game or how to do things on YouTube or on uh, on the internet overall they just don't look at it and they just maybe come across some helpful videos if they just start the launcher and it just catches their eye so first of all that there is something like an official video is a good thing but um, I have to also say whatever Gaijin said in this video, it was not wrong. The problem was what they didn't say, what they actually forgot to put into context to give also some various different examples and to um, really give specific examples on uh, stock grinds and the majority of things that they talked about were fighters not talking really about bombers in any shape or form not showing actual uh, realistic gameplay not realistic in the shape or form that i'm only talking about a realistic mode but also what is realistic to expect in war thunder um, also there are big discrepancies between the nations on the map uh, game mode all those things that were not really put or even that were not really um, given an example or even mentioned. Now I know you cannot always mention every single detail in a video that has to be like 10 minutes. I get that. I know that myself as somebody that makes videos uh, videos on nearly a daily basis. Um, but I just wanted to uh, go through the uh, single arguments that Gaishin made in this video and just show that it's not just a little bit stupid how I made the vi how they made the video but also a little bit insulting for the player that expected actually some true um, outstanding tips it was just like a midi a video made for the sake of making a video with arguments like put together in I guess like five minutes on a piece of paper like I do but with the actual lack of knowledge how RRB in particular plays out so um, whoever wrote the script I highly suggest that he should play War Thunder at least for a week before coming up with nonsense like this. So I'm, on, I'm in a really ranty status. Now it actually gave me an excuse to make a video like this um, because I wanted to talk about the map rotation. Now to put things in context, um, the video that I released today was um, called How I Make a Huge Amount of Silver Lines and um, again I forgot or I let out some arguments um, what else you can use the basic message was that for me personally it all condenses down to the German p47 you want to win very often uh, you want to have a decent chance of getting uh, very often in a gameplay where you actually can decide the outcome of a battle so that makes bombers obsolete that makes attackers obsolete uh, that makes um, a lot of fighters um, that do not really have the appropriate performance that do not really fit the matter obsolete so out of the over 1000 vehicles that we have in war thunder effectively for um you know fitting the matter just just a small portion of that is actually worth driving or flying out and this is why we have a lack of diversity now there are some uh, other aspects i will go over the arguments i will point out other problems especially the maps the map um layout and um what actually uh, we have in terms of other problems that are not even mentioned uh, which we have to overcome and then also bring some solutions to the table because this is what i want to do the most actually so um first of all um the stock grind is 
is designed to frustrate you. But uh, some planes, like attackers, if they even fully upgraded, have no purpose in the game, why would you upgrade them in the first place, other than, than being a completionist like I am? Then, um, as I said, overall everything that was said is true, but other aspects were not mentioned. For instance, the test flight. Yeah, the test flight is a good chance to get in touch with your vehicle for the first time, um, especially your plane, but there is no enemy to fight. There there is nothing where you can compare, uh, you know, your performance in a flight, in a fight, in an actual fight. So a custom battle would be much better with a friend. But you know, um, not everybody has a friend in war that also plays War Thunder, that also has the um, skill necessary to show you how you can make the most out of your plane and uh, going into battle it doesn't tell you anything how you should fight with your plane. So then um, also the test flight doesn't show you anything in terms of how big the value of certain upgrades is. There is no real uh, you know, guide out there with reliable data and reliable uh, sources where you see which upgrade you should go first for. Um, then the second aspect was don't rush in. Oh, you don't say. Um, there are not that many planes uh, in the game that you can rush in anyway and then come out. And those who can are a problem in the first place and are very often abused. So um, you have to wait for your chance. That is right, War Thunder Gaijin. That is correct. You have to wait for your chance. But who says that you know, nobody with an upgraded plane on the enemy team does the same and then when you both clash, uh, have a clash or a fight, then he will overcome you relatively easily um, if it's in the same BR plane. I've seen so many fights where uh, entire squads with very, very, let's say, competitive aircraft are just vulturing around and just um, not even going into the initial fight. Then teamwork. Again, oh, you don't say, but who prevents the enemy team doing the very same? Nothing. So um, I think this is nothing that helps you actually in, a, in an actual fight. I know by itself it's not wrong and I <clears throat> highly recommend this for everybody to do, but it's not an actual tip or trick that is unique. Then disengage. Are you kidding me? Um, in a game where the first attack run very often is the most successful and if somebody comes out of the cloud cover and your engine is uh, uh, you know, blown to pieces, if your wing is ripped off, you cannot disengage. You are dead. You have very often not the chance to return to the airfield in the first place. And even if you see the enemy coming and you want to disengage, he outperforms you so enormously very often. Uh, think about the, the difference between um, a stock P-47 and some of the premium P-47s. The, the difference is disgusting. The same goes for jets of any sort, especially if you're in a stock 8.0 jet versus fully upgraded 9.0 jets every single battle. You cannot even reliably side climb because if you have, before you have even reached 6,000 or 7,000 meters where you then can um, gain energy in the long run to even catch an enemy jet that is somewhere in a dogfight, he has to turn one way and you have bled through all your all your energy. This is not an argument. The discrepancies in performance is just disgusting, especially with the 8.0 chat problem that I made a video about as well. And um, I was criticized for it, of course. But honestly, it's disgusting experiencing this game after game after game. The result is less and less players play the, uh, play the stock jets, either pay for it or pay right through it, which is overall the goal the goal of Gaijin. But at the end, it's just, um, there is no diversity in War Thunder anymore. It's just a handful of vehicles. It's the same with tanks. And I'm just focusing in this video uh, here on, on planes in RRB in particular. And um, the next thing is use boosters. Hey, there are so many planes and um, also tanks that I have to use boosters on, that I have to upgrade, where the amount of, of RP that you have to get to get one necessary upgrade in the first place is insane. And one little booster doesn't help me if I just get one little booster per, per day per logging in and um, if I cannot even log in every day 
or I don't earn enough war bonds to um, get myself those boosters that don't expire. I mean, this is a, st a strong contrast to what I suggest how to earn silver lines, but um, you know, RP boosters are, a comp are somewhat a different aspect. And I think <laughs> this is, man, I mean, if you cannot even get your guns on target, if you cannot shoot anything down, if you don't have the bomb or rocket pylons to rack up the ground unit kills, if the income is very slow uh, and low in the first place, a booster is not magic. Technically you're right, but mostly you're activating them, you're the first one to get shot down because you cannot even climb, because you want to stick with your team, but then you are the one with the lowest altitude on your team, you're very often the first one to being focused down. Um, I'm sorry but Gaijin, but this is not really a solution to the problem. So my suggestion is overall, make the performance difference between a fully spaded and a fully stock plane not that extreme. Uh, and, and also there are planes where you have to invest much more RP than in others. Like it's a difference if you have a fighter that has three 20 millimeter cannons, let's say, of, of, of uh, one cannon type, and then you have um, another fighter or another plane rather that needs rockets, that needs bombs, that needs machine gun belts and the new machine guns, that has 20 millimeter cannons that overheat very quickly and uh, overall the flight performance stock is terrible and even if you have all the bombs and rockets unlocked, then you just don't have the performance to actually um, bring them into the target area because you're too slow, you cannot disengage. And that then uh, is actually what brings me to other problems, the lack of diversity with maps and the map layout. And I'm so sick and tired of the, of the what I can just say, rigged um, map rotation. Like I tried out several battles uh, over the weeks um, in the Italian bombers with the three torpedoes and also with the German duck. And guess what? I wanted to get Norway with the uh, uh, Italian bombers and I didn't get it once. I didn't get it once and that's just terrible. And while maybe it, the Italian nation might have a slightly different map rotation to the Germans, mostly you would expect you see them. And the same was with, with the um, with the Heinkel 111. After I unlocked the the, the Fritz X and the, and also the big bombs, um, you know, I never got no way again. Before that, with the small bomb loads where I actually can't really do anything with it, I never got this map. The same then with the duck. Guess which map I get all the time when flying the duck? Yeah, that's right, no way, where you just are so limited with the stuff you can do. Should I drop the 450 kilogram bombs on the, on, on the light cruisers? Do you know how many runs that takes? And then should I just uh, go to the flag airline to harvest here all the uh, AAA that shoots me down and just wrecks my engines and I never can make it back to the airfield in the first place? I don't even have enough time and enough ammunition to destroy the, the landing crafts and their income is pitiful. But then when I, when I use a fighter, I get on Norway and then in a fighter, it's not really that important on which map I am. But at the end, I just can then with 50 cals do uh, so much more damage. And uh, especially where is the old Ruhr map where for higher tiers, especially for tier three and four uh, prop, uh, prop planes, where has it gone? And the, the, the overall same ground unit pattern on those reskinned tank RB maps. It's disgusting, it's lame, it's boring. Uh, those are so huge maps that play out every single time the very same way, that make um, ground attackers useless and there is no skill involved because everybody sees you and the, the combat zone, the potential combat zone I should say, is not spread out like on the Ruhr map or on Norway. But mostly it's irrelevant. And then the, the, the Germans have to attack mostly medium tanks that are driving while the, uh, while the Americans have rockets and 50 cals where just they can rack up the light pillboxes and have in more ground uh, pounding uh, potential. And as much as I love the dog, on Norway it's not really that much fun. And then with the Italian bombers here, um, 
the P108, P Series 2 and 1. Uh, I'm sorry, but you cannot really hope to make a good attack run on on Sicily with uh, uh, with with those with this bomb load in a heavy bomber with a uh, seven five hundred kilogram bombs and the stock bomb load is just pitiful with fifty kilogram bombs even though you have a uh, thirty four of them or the and and you have to unlock the one hundred kilograms ones which are not that much better the selling point of those are the torpedoes the same goes with the G fifty five S. You know, the, the, one of the few uh, fighter planes or the only fighter plane with a torpedo. You never get to use the damn thing, you know, which is probably for the better because then you actually climb into your fighter thing. But for attackers and bombers, they, they are just not really um, that valuable. And a lot of people just then either tend to play exclusively fighters, which are the only realistic win condition in War Thunder Air RB. And then just um, don't care about attackers as well. Then you say, ah, but there is tank RB. Yeah, go into tank RB with a stock attacker. Tell me how this turns out for you. Whether our fighters constantly also circling around, shooting you down, SBA shooting at you, you don't have the speed, nor the reclining performance, nor the weaponry to do any good for your team. And then that brings us to also the helicopters. Oh, good lord. Uh, helicopters alone in tank RB without ATGMs, just with machine guns. Ooh, that's gonna be rough. But, you know, it's there, there are so many aspects where it's just really sad. And that uh, leads to a lack of diversity. We get more and more planes and tanks and even ships with more and more patches um, with every single patch. Um, but actually what we see in the battle is only the the flavor of the month um, and the quote-unquote overpowered or overperforming vehicles the normal average player has no real fun in the game and gets um, you know uh, killed 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 without gaining civil lines without gaining uh, RP without having fun and so many many people abandoning War Thunder we haven't seen good changes to RRB but more or less just bad changes and that we drop a uh, diversive and fun map like Ruhr just for an example to get reskinned uh, tank RB maps that play out all the same way with just a the all the same pattern of ground units over and over again that is the problem and the massive ridiculous difference between a stock vehicle and a fully upgraded vehicle in terms of performance weapons performance flight performance and so forth and uh, which is really really important and to make to get yourself into a position with side climbing and observing the enemy team in a stock plane especially with constantly being up here like with the 8.0 jets versus 9.0 jets where just a lot of people just don't care about anything and just throwing the money at Gaijin just to be in the best jet with uh, all the upgrades with the very best gold ace crew whatever it's not fun it's not competitive it's not fair it's quite the opposite it's designed to frustrate and then to bring out a video with arguments that are not even well thought through and just you know just lamely um, presented it's slightly stupid and slightly insulting and the map rotation is a problem by itself we had it in the past also with tanks just to give you a short example where i got game after game after game uh, just on abandoned factory where i got nothing else but this map and where we have for example karelia as a high tier tank map where it should be a low tier or reserve tier map exclusively i think there are so many problems that could be easily solved but gaijin has not even any sort of interest in bringing any sort of improvement to the gameplay experience which could, which could be done with not that huge amount of effort and um, I think it feels good to vent here a little bit um, I think it will not change anything but I think um, what's really necessary is that we bring the team or the persons that are in charge to make decisions within War Thunder to actually play the game themselves to come across the issues in stock vehicles with not the very best crews where they have to grant the money themselves to see i mean there is one way 
to get data over and over again uh, by you know collecting the results of various different uh, of all the players in War Thunder, in Tank RP, in uh, Air RP, in Arcade, in Simulator. Uh, but certain projects just simply lag. And when we don't see enduring confrontations, which would give a new emphasis, a new value to all the planes with long en uh, endurance capabilities, with lots of ammunition, with high altitude performance, with ground striking capabilities, we're actually gunning down the uh, enemy's uh, advance in, in, in the frontline mode. This is a good change. And even this has been neglected massively. And we saw no real change. And when I look at ships, when I look at their stock run uh, with getting the fire prevention equipment and also the repair parts, it's ridiculous. And with helicopters, I don't really see that this is being fun in the first place. And believe me, the repair costs, the silver line costs, the uh, costs for uh, RPs will not get cheaper. War Thunder is going into a direction where the focus for Gaijin is on helicopters, on uh, modern main battle tanks, where um, the real just caring about World War II stuff, where a lot of people have just more fun playing, is not really that not visible. I don't really feel like Gaijin is caring. And that will repel players. And in the long run, Gaijin will earn just less money. And Gaijin will uh, will make a War Thunder last not that long compared if they would take the appropriate steps to move into the right direction. I'm looking forward to helicopters. I'm looking forward to every single patch, even to high tier. Maybe, maybe it gets better. Maybe we see, we see decompression. But what we see is all always kind of the opposite and what keeps the game alive is hope and um, yeah to bring then a video like this to help people to grind I mean maybe maybe it was meant uh, in a good way but effectively it hasn't helped anybody what we need what we need as changes is again as I said the difference between the performance stages of a plane shouldn't be that massive for attackers we should have at least the first bomb load or the first rocket load um, unlocked like with the majority of bombers and we need valuable targets we need to make um, the big maps actually feel big we need to spread out the combat zone so that even attackers and bombers that are stuck have uh, early on some chances to earn at least something to bring back the diversity to bring back the fun to attackers and bombers um, without making them a game breakers and that is not that easy but at the end of the day it's Gaijin's goddamn job so with this final word I think uh, that's it um, the main focus of course was here on uh, aircraft especially um, you know looking at uh, attackers like the duck or even the 82 sky raider or 84 variants um, various different other uh, attackers that just are nothing but gun food except if you use them in fighter mode and the same goes for a lot of bombers with the current performance um, of the damage models and the vulnerability of those that are not fun also to balance out the game with repair costs ah that's a topic by itself but at the end of the day um there could be so much change for the better and yet Gaijin doesn't really seem to be interested and that is the part that makes me really angry. Thanks for watching, thanks for listening, I hope you enjoyed this video, give it a like if you did, subscribe if you want to see more and we'll see each other on the waves, in the skies and on the battlefields of War Thunder.